Y'all listen to us. Everybody here okay? I think we have several groups here. Everybody's welcome to the beautiful State House on beautiful South Carolina morning, and we are we are, are making more progress today. As you know, we have a brand new department. We had a small one, but we have now made it a cabinet agency, and that's the Department of Veterans Affairs. And of course, you know, we need a secretary of Veterans Affairs. And I, I got it's funny how these things work. Uh, I remember a few years ago, I was on the committee when. Governor Haley was picking cabinet members, and I was involved in the law enforcement review section. And we were interviewing applicants or people who had come forward, citizens who wanted to serve. And one of them that came forward, we were in the law enforcement group, and we were looking for the, someone to head the Department of Probation, Pardon, and Parole. We call it Triple P. Well, in walked Colonel Kevin Sweeto and sat down, and I never will forget, we said, well, Colonel, Tell us why it is you think that you would be a good fit to lead Triple P. And Colonel Sweeto said, and I quote, if you will tell me what that is, I'll be glad to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and so he talked about, he was the uh, deputy commander at Fort Jackson for a number of years. And uh, as he left, we decided he, he was, is not the, the leader of Triple P, but we definitely had to get him into the government and on the team somewhere. And so that's when uh, Governor Haley selected him to be the head of the Department of Motor Vehicles. He's been there ever since and doing a grand job. So that's how these, these things work. Uh, as you all know, we have a, had a panel that reviewed, sought people and reviewed information that came in from people to uh, serve uh, as the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. And when I was given that recommend, those recommendations, from General Livingston, who was at that time had been the uh, commanding officer of the National Guard here, it, I realized that I, I couldn't make a mistake because the, those uh, men and women willing to serve who had come forward were extraordinary. And as you know, I asked Bobby Cox if he would take the job, and he said he would, and then we determined that there's a, a law that we had missed in my office because he was in the legislature and various reasons, he was ineligible. He didn't know about it, neither did we, but that, that, uh, that ended that opportunity. But uh, when I'd called General Grimsley to tell him that I had decided to select Bobby Cox, uh, he said that he would be on the team and I said, well, General Grimsley, uh, don't go anywhere because you never know when a door's going to open up because we need you. Now, little did I know that it was going to open up so quickly. <laughs> but it did. So now I'll say to Bobby Cox, Bobby, don't go anywhere. <laughs> you never know when another, another door will open. Let me tell you a little bit. Well, I'll let... If, General, if you'll come forward, I'll, I'll get back to the, the other general in a moment. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Uh, as the Governor said, we had a uh, great panel, a uh, well-represented panel, uh, that uh, made the recommendations to the Governor for the Secretary's position. And uh, you'll notice the uh, two people that the Governor has mentioned, very high quality, very strategic thinking. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the panel and to kind of give you an idea of who we had. Uh, first off, Senator Ronnie Cromer, uh, he's a senator in the state, uh, but also an Army veteran. Uh, we had uh, Willard Cumming Cunningham, who is the commander of disabled veterans, uh, and he is an Army veteran. Uh, Bill Dukes, a uh, former uh, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army and an Air Force veteran. Uh, we had uh, Patrick Ellswick, uh, President uh, Win Lai Supps. Uh, a great volunteer organization, Marine veteran. Uh, Caroline Furman, uh, a uh, Marine veteran and executive director of Paris Island Museum. Uh, Bobby Holesclaw, uh, who's the commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, an Air Force veteran. Uh, Todd Humphreys, who is the president of the South Carolina Association of County Veterans Affairs Officers and he's also an Army veteran. Uh, we had uh, Walt Richardson, who is the uh, commander of the American Legion for South Carolina, a Marine veteran. Uh, we had Anna Harris, 
Uh, she's the director of human resources for North American Rescue, a Army veteran. Uh, Ashley Young, uh, owner of Palmetto Counseling, and uh, she is currently, she's an Army veteran and currently in the Army National Guard. Uh, and uh, then, of course, we have from the staff, Mark Plowden, who has uh, more experience in the military than probably any of us. Uh, but it was a great panel. I want to thank the panel members. And, uh, Governor, uh, as, you've mentioned, as you mentioned to me when we made the recommendations, uh, the recommendations are so deep that uh, uh, hope, hopefully we won't do this again anytime soon. But we still got a few more for you. <laughs> thank you, Governor. Thank you, General. William Grimsley, General, Brigadier General Grimsley, excuse me, Major General, that's two stars, <laughs> is here. And I need to say, uh, Kevin Sweeto is also, besides being the head of the Department of Motor Vehicles, is the Secretary of the Army's civilian aide uh, to, to the Army. And we, we appreciate that, uh, that service. Let me tell you about this man, <clears throat> a 39 career in the Army, uh, he's demonstrated commitment, excellence, determination, and success. Is deputy commander of the 4th Inf Infantry Division and multinational division Baghdad. He was responsible for the planning, training, and operation of more than 40,000 joint and combined coalition forces deployed in combat and stability operations throughout the Baghdad province. As deputy corps commander and senior commander at Fort Hood, he oversaw training, readiness, morale, and quality of life for 48,000 soldiers and their 70,000 family members. That's a lot of service. <laughs> also, he executed an $875 million base support budget. While there, he also developed and executed the Army's first holistic health promotion program to increase soldier and family resilience. And as Chief of Staff for the United States Strategic Command at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, he directed oversight of more than 4,000 military and civilian staff members with responsibility for nuclear operations, cyber security, space, missile defense, global intelligence, reconnaissance, and combating weapons of mass destruction. His record is exemplary, it's unmatched, and I'm honored to ask to have asked him, honored he came forward and he has accepted this position for the great people of South Carolina. We want to be sure we are a military state. We have a military tradition, eight major military bases in South Carolina. No state has the military tradition in history that we do. We want to be sure that our veterans receive the things that they have earned, that the military in our country, which has needed them desperately in many, many times, that they have earned those things and they should receive them and also that all the opportunities for work and business, prosperity and opportunity that are in our state are, are known to them, made available to them because all the employers, all the big businesses that are seeking places to come in the United States tell us they want to have veterans working to do the business in their companies and they're investing billions of dollars to do it. So we have, we have a we have so many talented people in this state. It's, it's a thrill for me to be able to work with them and to have them come forward for these uh, very important leadership positions. So, General Grimsley, we're delighted you're here to undertake this task. Jan, we are glad that, that you are, are supporting and pushing him forward, and we look forward to seeing you many, many times and great success for our state. Thank you, Governor. General. Thank you very much, Governor McMaster. Uh, I am incredibly honored and humbled at this opportunity, this nomination, to be the first Secretary of Veterans Affairs for the state of South Carolina. As a guy who spent most of his adult life in service to others uh, by design, by volunteer, this is a great chance for me to get back and do that same thing for my state. And I've been looking for a place to do it. This seems an awfully great fit. And uh, so we migrated from Beaufort this morning to get up here and, and uh, speak to you all for a minute. The governor has asked me uh, 
to really focus on cooperation, collaboration, and communication as the big three C's as a way to put all of the things together that are already resident from the national level, the state level, the local level, from our veteran service organizations, and the many, many nonprofits that are out there doing great things for our veterans in all of our communities throughout this great state. What we need to do is put those together better, provide those opportunities to the men and women who are veterans, you know, over 400,000 of whom live in this state, and really, really work hard to increase those opportunities, education, health promotion, health care, um, job opportunities, employment. It's, it's limitless. So I look forward to working with, obviously, the remainder of the uh, executive branch and all of these entities and organizations throughout the state on behalf of our veterans. I really have to applaud the legislature for bringing this law forward. I'll step out of body a minute as a nominee and just as a veteran. I'm extraordinarily grateful that we're elevating the position of veterans in this great state to the appropriate uh, visibility. And so for the legislature who voted it and the legislators, many of them are standing behind me, who authored it, governor signing it into law, uh, this is extraordinarily important. You know, about 10% uh, of the state's population are veterans and about 10% of those are retirees, military retirees. But it's not just the retirees, it's everybody who serves and the families who support them you know, she and I are coming up on, I have to do math in my head, and public is already a terrible idea, but uh, 38 years in April we will have been married, and all of it was as an Army wife. And so that's extraordinarily important. So I really, really deeply appreciate this, look forward to this opportunity, and I'm ready to get to work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we, we have a great team, and, and you, you see uh, many of them here. And, of course, Bobby Cox is, is, will be working with us as well, and we have, uh, we have a lot of work to do, and we will be successful. Does anyone have any questions? What he said. <laughs> Any more? Yes, sir. I guess the representative Cox. Well, and the teacher. You know, this is obviously going to roll over. How do you feel about the general Well, he was my first choice besides myself to do, a, to do it. So, so he has my 100% support, and we talked uh, yesterday, and uh, we are, we're on the same page. This is a team of teams. This is bigger than one person, and we're all on board with helping the veterans of our state. So I'm looking forward to him getting to work. It would be great. So. Bobby and I communicated after he was nominated. He reached out to me. I reached back and said, you know, I'm all on board. Whatever you're going to do, I'm behind, and just let me know how I can help. And, uh, and I'm going to lean on him hard again in the legislature and beyond. So. More questions? Yes. Yeah, can we talk again just a little bit more about why you felt this position uh, was necessary? Well, uh, General Grimsley mentioned it a, a moment ago, and uh, it's true. This, this is a, a military, this state has a military tradition. Uh, general Mark Clark, who was a, a four-star general uh, and, and also president of the Citadel, just after World War II, said there's more patriotism in South Carolina than any other place in the world. And it's true, and that's one of the great traditions, customs, strengths that we have in state because the, the principles and notions and commitments of duty, honor, country are strong, and they make people stronger. Uh, you combine that with our great tradition of faith. They often refer to us as the, uh, the buckle on the Bible belt, and you put all of those people with that have come from all these places, put them into uh, paradise, which is where we live, and you, you have some great, great people. So that military tradition is something that, that counts, and it's something that's recognized not only around the country, but around the world, not only for the military strength, but the strength of the people who are involved. So we want to be sure that, that the, the veterans in South Carolina, this is the Department of Veterans Affairs, headed by a cabinet secretary, uh, we want to be sure that it is recognized around the country for what it is, that our veterans are recognized for what they are and what they've done, and that we, we promote duty, honor, and country among all our citizens because it makes us a better place. Come on, Cisco. <laughs> as quickly as possible. We want to go ahead and get as quick as we get the paperwork. 
We're going to hold confirmation hearings. We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to get uh, getting General Grimsley in place and taking care of the veterans of the state of South Carolina. Yes, sir. Well, I, I don't have a great answer for you today, but I'm going to spend a lot of time between the governor's budget, where we stand, and where I think we need to go. My experience, especially from combat forward and in command at Fort Hood, Texas, the largest military installation in the United States Army, uh, we developed programs there for resiliency, soldier and family resiliency. You heard the governor mention that. But more importantly, it was really what became the Army's program for comprehensive soldier and family fitness across all the pillars of health promotion. So physical, behavioral, mental, spiritual, social, family, all of financial, all of those things. I think all of those are very important. Mental health is an extraordinary part of that. You know, the veteran suicide rate is tragic. Is, I mean, that's, that's hardly a word to describe it. But it's systemic across society, and it's thing, something we need to focus on. It's health care and health promotion. What we learned at Fort Hood is it takes a big tent of people to really bring in. You can't just necessarily go to the traditional places. The United States Veterans Affairs offers some tremendous services, but there are plenty of others out there that can help. What we did at Fort Hood is we opened a big tent and we brought behavioral health providers from 50 miles around Fort Hood in and listened to what they said about the treatment they were providing our soldiers and families, and then we developed programs there. I intend to try and focus us forward in that same general vein, because I think we have some real opportunities to leverage a lot of the great things in the state. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I do, actually. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time learning, first off. Um, although I live in the state, come from the state, I've never been in the legislative, executive, or judicial parts of this state. I'm a soldier, and I've, you know, lived down in Beaufort, and I do what I do. But I think I had a lot to learn, first off. The first big thing I need to do is listen to other people. There are there are tremendous things that are already going on in the state. I think there are tremendous opportunities out here that I need to learn more about. And then, I, this is what I did, by the way, every time I took command of anything. Don't try and change anything drastically unless it's, you see it's terrible for the first 30 days. Go around, talk, meet people, pay attention, listen to what they say, and really bring them all in. This is about stakeholder engagement across the board. Our veteran service organizations, the traditional big six, as well as the you know, newer up-and-comers, um, they have a lot to offer here. Go to our military bases, too, because the commanders and command sergeants, major senior enlisted leaders of those bases, they have a lot to say about this, too. They're our future veterans we want to keep in the state. So I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to build an operational plan for execution that, that I believe is going to take into account those things. And together, as we said, cooperation, collaboration, communication, in collaboration, cooperation with everybody across the state, communicating transparently, we're going to do our best to move forward here very quickly. Last question, there. Thank you very much. Congratulations.